happens in, in, in Malaysia or something happens in Ghana, you may not hear for uh, one week before, you know, before it gets to you. Mm. Or you post a letter, it doesn't get there for a while and all of that. But now with the social media, you know, everything is in real time and we are seeing it. So it's, it's really staring us in the face and there seems to be quite um, uh, an, an upsurge, especially in terms of reported cases, mm. which is a good thing unlike what was before. So what, what would you say has happened to the issue of stigma? Because that was one of the things that people faced that made them never talk about it. We still have that. But now, like I said, the silence, silence was a weapon. Mm. Because before, no one used to talk about it. You know, uh, there was a lot of stigma. There was a lot of uh, 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 threats, you know, shaming. Are you, are you going to go and um, report to your husband? Are you going to go and say you've been raped? And all of that. But with with advocacy over the years by groups such as ours, we've created the awareness, we've moved. We're not there yet, but we are moving the shame, the blame from the victim survivors and putting it at the feet of the perpetrator. Mm. Because the shame and the blame should be for the perpetrator. You know? So now people have, have mustered courage, mm. fathers are coming out to seek help for their daughters, Sons are looking, seeking help for their mothers. You know, it's, it's, it's getting better. You shared the story of a gentleman whose daughter was raped by his landlord's son. Yeah. And they tried to cover that up. Would you want to go through that before we go into the Spotlight Initiative? Ah, that, was, that, was a, um, that was a very emotional one for me and uh, at the same time very annoying one. Mm. Because um, um, there was going to be uh, a miscarriage of justice there. In the sense that this young man, the daughter, a three-year-old girl, was sexually, was actually raped by a neighbor, by the son of his landlord, mm. a 29-year-old young man. And then he, the police tried to uh, cover it up, as it were, you know, telling him to, you know, let's settle, 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 you know, he's your landlord, you are living there, and he has pleaded, you know, and all of that. And see, he has brought this money for you to go and treat your daughter. This man did not want that money. Not that he wasn't looking for money to treat his daughter. Mm. He was looking for money to treat his daughter. But he didn't want that money, which was uh, aimed at being an exchange. You take that money, you, mm. you keep quiet. You shut up. You shut up. Because according to him, he said, what will I tell my daughter when she grows up and she asks me, Daddy, what happened to me? Mm. You know? So... He cried out of the station and luckily he ran into a, a reporter, mm. a punch reporter. I told his story why he was in tears and the punch reporter said, Whoom, this is the story. This is it. Got the story, uh, blasted it. And then, then the then deputy governor of Lagos State, um, Lope, Adefulore. Lope, Adefulore. Mm. zero tolerance. She had zero tolerance for anything violence, right from when she was a commissioner. Mm. She saw it immediately in the newspaper, and then she calls Ministry of Justice, she calls OPD, have you seen what I'm seeing? Please go and find out and all of that. And then on getting to the police station, the police wanted to turn the story around. That the, the girl's family, the father, did not want any case. And that, of course, annoyed the deputy governor. That, right. I mean, that, I said, okay, if he doesn't want a case, arrest him and the, the wife and all of them. Why would this happen to... Do you understand? Yes. But luckily, this young man was directed to Project Alert by the punch reporter. Mm. So by the time this drama was about going that way, it was with us already. So we now called the deputy governor. We said, that is not That's not true. They lied against the man. That's not true. Do you understand? And that was how we all landed at Banti. And then, the police officer... Ooh, the IPO who was trying to do the settlement mm. and it even turned out that more money had been collected and he had pocketed like 60% of it. So these are some of the things you see. Mm. But did the man get justice for his daughter? Yes, 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 yes. The young man, the, the, the guy was arrested, he was charged to court. Mm. Yes. And they got justice. Yes. Now, let, let, you shared that story at the two-day um, workshop that you had, you know, capacity building workshop. Tell us about the Spotlight Initiative.